Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Python tutorial, we are going to learn about writing the data into XLSX file with Python program. So in many situations when we are, say for example, doing the Selenium automation with Python, we will be requiring to write the data into the Excel file and then read the data from the Excel file. So whether it's the automation, whether it's general Python programming, these situations and scenarios are pretty common. So you should understand how you can, you know, write the data into the Python, into the XLSX file and then how to read them. So in this tutorial, I'll totally focus on writing part and in the next tutorial, I'll focus on the reading part of the uh, reading the data from the Excel file. Okay, so if we go to google.com, I'll show you some of the libraries or the modules which are already present. So if you just search for Python Excel, right, and here you will see python-excel.org. Okay, so if you go to this particular link here, you will see there are lots and lots of modules available. So OpenPy Excel is very popular at the moment. So because it uh, supports the latest file format, so XLSX, which will be working in this particular tutorial. But then there is XLSX Writer, which you can use as well, which is basically for writing the data. So this OpenPy Excel will be used for reading and writing as well. So we can use the same module. So install it and we can use for reading and writing same OpenPy Excel. So it is very popular. Then there are other ones. So the other ones, for example, if you are working with the older format, say for example, .xls, then you have Excel RD for reading the data from the XLS format and then Excel WT for writing the data. Now, if we go through this particular uh, OpenPy Excel uh, documentation, so let's go to the download first and see how we can install it. So installation is pretty simple. So we just have to use this command pip install OpenPy Excel. So we'll simply copy it from here and go to your command prompt and then paste it. Now this will basically get all the dependencies and modules and install OpenPy Excel and this will be available for us to use. Okay, so you can see that now it has successfully installed this OpenPy Excel for us. Now, if you see other modules, so quickly let me go back Right. So if you, if we go through this OpenPy Excel, we'll understand how to read and write other modules. You can pick up really quickly. Uh, the, the concept remains same, whether it's different module or any third module or new module comes in picture. So if you understand one, you'll be able to pick up and practice with the others if you want to. Right. So if you, for example, you want to work with XLS format, you just need to install XLRD to read and XLWT to write. OK, so in this case, you have to get these two modules. But in OpenPy Excel, you have to basically get just one module and it supports reading and writing both. But the thing is, it will only support the latest file formats. If, as you can see, if you go to the documentation here, you will see that it supports XLSX, SM, uh, XLTX and TM files. Right. So now we have installed the OpenPy Excel. So now what we'll do is I'll let me close PyCharm and open PyCharm again. OK, so PyCharm has open now. Now in this file IO demo, let me quickly create a new Python file and I will say write XLSX demo. I'll save this file as write XLSX demo. Now, since we have already installed OpenPy Excel module, so now we can import the module. So we can simply say import OpenPy Excel, right? So that's the module that we'll be needing in order to work with the XLSX file. Let's go to the documentation and understand a little bit about this documentation, right? So it's a Python library to read, write, Excel 2010, these sort of format files. And if you see, there is an example, the sample code already given, which is very simple code that we will use to understand how you can write the data into the Excel file. OK, so the first step, say, for example, manually, if you want to basically write into the XLSX file or, you know, Excel file, basically, we'll open the workbook first, right? So we'll open the workbook, which is basically what the first step is. So from we basically we are trying to open, right? So here, uh, we are just trying to open the workbook, then we are getting the worksheet. So in the second step, what we'll do is we'll go to the sheet. So once we open the workbook, the sheet 
name is already there or or the default sheet is already open now within that sheet we can write our data into the cells okay so that's what this third step is doing so second step is basically about the sheet uh, sheet and then third step is about getting those columns or the cells and writing the data within those cells so now let's go back to the pie charm and let's start working with the open pie excel okay so let me create the delete this xls file which is there so now we do not have any xls file here and we are having this write xls demo.py so to start we simply will import so we'll say from open pie excel so we we know that we are using this particular module and from this module we'll open or we'll import worksheet right so it's w is cap and just say workbook okay so from open by excel import workbook so in order to work with uh, excel files so we need to import this workbook from open by excel so we can create the workbook object right so we now we can create the workbook object we can say wb and then simply say workbook right so now this wb variable holds this reference to this particular workbook object now we have created the workbook so it's similar to the manual step opening the workbook right now once you open the workbook there is a sheet by default already open right so by default there is sheet open but in the program you have to specify the active sheet so we have to create an a reference object right so we can we need to create an object so worksheet and then we need to say wb dot so whatever workbook has been created the active worksheet in that particular workbook so we'll say wb dot active right so now the active sheet will be referenced by this particular variable ws okay now we can simply go to a particular cell and write the data into the cell okay so now if you have opened any excel file you will see the columns are referred by a b c d and it goes like that and the rows are start from one two three four so if we say a1 it's basically referencing to the column which is uh, to the cell which is basically in the column a and row first row right so that's the intersection so if we say ws and then we want to write in the column uh, a1 we'll simply say a1 okay and then whatever data we want to write we can simply provide the data there so we say for example i want to write rcv academy in this particular cell i will provide that data and the last step is to basically save this workbook so until unless you save it it won't save the workbook so we simply need to say wb dot save and provide the name of the workbook so we can say demo excel dot xlsx all right now if you run this particular program it will create this demo excel dot xlsx and you can see it has created here in this file io demo if i open this you will see that in the column a and row one rcv academy has been printed right so it has been saved so these are just the steps very simply required to basically write any data into the xlsx file using openpy excel library right now say for example i want to write it in some different cell say for example i want to write in c3 instead of a1 right so we simply change it to c3 let's write it again and open the excel and see whether it has written it correct so you can see now it has written in c column and third row right so that's what the significance of this basically this cell is here so create the workbook reference to the active workbook uh, worksheet and then go to the cell where you want to write the data now this is very simple okay in actual scenarios you won't be doing such a simple step step but in order to learn it this is where you start now there are many better ways to basically handle or populate the data this is the manual way so we simply reference to the cell and provide the data or enter the data into the sheet now say for example i want to um ha i have a list okay which is basically you know nested list you can say and i want to enter the data that is there in the list into this excel sheet okay so let me comment this out all right and say for example i have the test data 
so i'll say test data and my test data into the list so this list contains another list and the list holds name and city all right so that's the first and so these these are the headings so basically name and city and then the other list within this particular parent list contains say for example the name so let's say my name comma city and then so now say for example i have this particular data and i want to enter this particular data into this demo excel dot xls right so how we can achieve that so there is say for example uh, rather than manually entering this particular data into the cells one by one we can do or we can use the loop so we can use for right so we can say for data in test data right and we can use so we can simply use ws dot append so there is a append method which we can use and what this append method does is it basically so it this for loop will iterate through this particular nested list and it will basically append whatever data is there right so we want to append this data so this first list will be appended in the first row the second data which is which will be appended in the second row third row and fourth row accordingly right so we can simply say ws dot append and we want to append the data within this particular sheet right and then we are saving so we are wb dot save demo excel dot xlsx okay if i run this now so there is some issue here let me see what the issue is all right so i missed this comma here right so that's what the problem was so if i run this now so it has finished processing let's open this demo excel and here you can see that it has successfully entered all the data that's there so name city and then the first row uh, the the second row third row and fourth row so this is the heading if you want to specify and the data bit below that right so usually whenever you are trying to enter the data make sure you know first set of data that you are providing in the iterable basically so for example you are using list you can use tuples within um, this list so first set will be considered as the header and then any further data below that will be appended into the excel file as the further or the data within that excel file okay so that's the better way now say for example i want to randomly populate the data right populate the data within the excel sheet so i can use nested loops as well so for say for example for i want to say for i and then in i'll use a range function so i want to say for example i want to populate five rows with random data so i'll say for i in range and then range will start from one and then comma six right so if you notice the range function it will basically end one less than what we have specified here right so for that for i in range one to six and then we'll say for j we'll use another loop so we'll say for j in range and then we'll we'll use this nested loop or the inner loop for the column so this is for the row and this is for the column so we'll iterate from say for example i want to populate four columns so i'll specify five there okay and then i can simply use ws dot and then there is a method cell right so we'll say ws dot cell and we need to specify the row so we need to specify row and in the row we'll specify the i right so i is the row if you see the first loop here and then we'll specify the column and column will hold the value of j okay and then we'll say dot and value right so we'll specify the value and in the value we'll simply say sorry dot value and we'll say equal to let's say i plus j all right so what we are doing here is we are simply doing the two loops the first loop is for the row second loop is for the columns and then we are using the cell method within this particular worksheet to populate the row and column with the sum of the row and column so in the first iteration what will happen is the the loop will start from one then it will come to the inner column so it will print one plus one right 
in the first cell, right? In A1, it will print 2 and then 3 and then further on. Okay, so if I run this now, let's run it. So it has run successfully. Let's open the demo Excel and you can see that it has printed this particular data into my Excel sheet, right? So it has printed five rows here. Okay, so starts from first row and finished at five. And then in terms of column, it has started from A and finished at D, right? So that's where it finishes. Now, please make sure that you do not use or start from zero because if you see the Excel, basically the row starts from one. So you have to make sure that this starts from one and not zero. Okay. So now you can see if you try to evaluate this particular code, you can see that in the first iteration, it took the value one for the I came within this particular inner loop, which is the J for this range. So one and one, it has printed two, and then it has incremented this J loop to one uh, to two, and then two plus one, it has printed three. And similarly, it has went along for this particular first iteration. Then in the second uh, iteration of the row, it has printed accordingly until all the values have been printed successfully in this particular XLSX. All right. So that's all about this particular tutorial on how you can write the data into the XLSX file using OpenPy Excel with different techniques. So I've tried to cover the very basic technique, then a little bit advanced append function, and then also nested loops. Try to explore as much as you can because there is the learning will happen more when you will try to do more scenarios around the things that I have covered today because this will help you to build a stronger foundation when we go to Python programming or any Selenium automation scripts and framework development. So that's all for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful and clear. Thank you very much for watching.